This is the S24 Ultra, and I used many of the features when it first came out six months ago, but now six months later, these are the features that I still use. Welcome back to another video, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Glad you're here, where I make content around tech, accessories, and my experience with it to try to help you out. So if you enjoy, leave a like and subscribe to see more. So this list of features that I still use on the S24 Ultra isn't in any particular order, it's just the features that I still use. So starting with the first one, the S Pen shutter button. So there's a dedicated button on the S Pen as you can see right over there. It enables basically a bunch of features that you can interact with on the phone by just pressing it, holding it, double tapping it, etc. And it's powered by low latency Bluetooth which is really cool because it basically doesn't take up any battery life on the phone. So it enables me to use the phone for photography or videography hands free for like group shots, selfies or just far away shots that I want of my of whatever landscape I'm taking a photo of with my S24 Ultra and I can have it stabilized on something and not have to you know tap the screen and risk maybe it getting a little bit more blurry or shaky or something like that. I just simply tap this button and it takes the shot. So that's the first feature, dedicated button on the S Pen. So moving on to the second feature, so this one has to do with multitasking and specifically uh, split screen and app hovering. So I kind of combined these two into one because they basically enable the overall feature of multitasking and it enables you to basically run two apps at once if not more and it's super convenient for when you're in a pinch and you want to kind of browse two things at once and just multitask. I find that it does increase productivity and that too efficiently because it's built into the software, It's it's been on this software for many years now so Samsung has had plenty of time to like improve it and polish it to their uh, expertise and it's great, it's super helpful and I use it quite a bit. And overall basically it just streamlines the processes, saves time and enables users to basically just uh, seamlessly multitask which is really good. And if you don't have YouTube Premium you can basically get picture in picture mode with this feature, the, the app hovering feature. Anyways moving on to the third feature which was basically has to do with the battery and it's to limit the battery capacity to 80%. This feature is built into the phone, the software itself. You can enable it to either stop charging at 100%, which is what phones normally do or normally did in the past, or 85% or 80%, which I prefer to do. The advantage of this is that it preserves the battery health over time. So I've had this phone for over six months now and the battery life has more or less remained the same. Now, I understand the true test is like a year or two in, but even six months later, you can sometimes see other smartphones showing the battery age. So it's good that this phone has not done that yet. And I'm pretty sure that's thanks to limiting the battery charge to 80%. So with it preserving the battery health of this, it also makes way for reducing the amount of times that you need to get the battery replaced or get a new phone entirely, which is definitely a win. Now the fourth feature on the S24 Ultra that I still use to this day is the fingerprint scanner. Now it's a really cool biometric security feature and when this feature first dropped on older phones like this under display fingerprint scanner it was super spotty it didn't really work that well but now all these years in it really works quite well and it's an ultrasonic sensor so basically you can basically do it at night or daytime or literally any time of the day you don't need no light shining back onto your thumb to read your fingerprint or anything. It's just, it works and it's great. It unlocks my S24 Ultra fast and securely, which also protects my device and conveniently unlocks my phone whenever I need it to. And it's very reliable in that sense. So fingerprint scanner underneath the display, ultrasonic, also, also a W. And it's a feature I still use. Of course, I still use it. I don't really use Face ID or, or the face unlock that comes with this phone because I just find that like when I just tap it, it just unlocks just so quickly. I don't know, if you have an S24 Ultra or any kind of under display fingerprint scanner, let me know in the comments down below what you, how you feel about it. The fifth feature I want to talk about is Adobe Lightroom being the default photo editing app. So it did come pre-installed with the S24 Ultra when it first released, which is really cool because normally you'd have to rely on something like Snapseed or some, some other third party app, but it's cool that Lightroom is like kind of directly integrated with the Samsung phone and Samsung phones in general now and it enables users like me to basically create stunning images and edit them without the need to install any kind of additional apps or third-party apps. So that's feature number five, Lightroom being pre-installed the, as the default photo editing app on the S24 Ultra. So the next feature is also a camera related feature which is the Expert RAW app which we saw first in the S22 Ultra two years ago and it's basically a really cool photo taking app this time that's pre-installed and basically it acts as a super robust application for the S24 and the S20 series. It provides manual camera settings for raw capturing capabilities which is super powerful because as we all know by now I hope 
the S24 Ultra has a 200 megapixel camera and it can shoot up to 50 megapixels in RAW mode. So you're getting all this detail and all this information to either edit or not edit, but if you do want to edit it, you can capture it in 50 megapixel RAW photos. And basically this expert RAW app provides greater control over image quality and creative expression. Now speaking of the 200 megapixel sensor, that's the seventh feature, the 200 megapixel sensor and 50 megapixel raw photos. But yeah, like I said in the previous feature, you can capture high quality photos with great capabilities for editing with the 50 megapixel raw mode and it basically allows you to create photos that you're actually intending to create. So yeah, this 200 megapixel sensor allows for capturing stunning photos with exceptional clarity and also allows you to edit more kind of creatively and openly with all the information that's provided in the raw mode. Now feature number eight, you can pin apps in the RAM. You can force apps to stay in the RAM. So let me show you how this works. Basically, if you open up your multitasking carousel and you want to say, for example, uh, pin the settings app in the RAM, you can just tap on the app icon itself, look for keep open, tap that, and it'll say lock with the lock indication on the bottom right corner, letting you know that it's locked in the RAM. So if you press close all, and it'll default going back to home. It'll show you when you go back to the multitasking that the settings app is still open. And no matter how much you try to close it, it won't close. So that's how that works. And that's good for when you wanna force an app to remain open if you have something important going on in the background that you don't wanna close. It's super helpful for those kind of situations. And because it enables faster app launch times, it also makes the whole process of opening and closing apps more efficient and kind of saves on the performance as well because the whole phone doesn't have to kind of go through the whole process of reopening an app, closing it, and then reopening it. It takes a lot more power to do that than to just keep it in the RAM. So pinning or forcing apps in the RAM is the eighth feature. The next feature is super helpful, and I don't use this as often as I thought, but when I do, it definitely comes in handy. And basically, it's taking long screenshots natively. So with this feature, you can capture an entire web page or basically long screenshots of conversations or just kind of content on your phone. And you can conveniently capture and share lengthy information that you would have to otherwise take individual screenshots or just kind of separate it and then combine it all at once, which this long screenshots feature does for you. And that's why I still use it to this day and it's super helpful. And the 10th and final feature is edge panels. Edge panels were first introduced with the Galaxy Note Edge way back when, but the physical edge feature itself has finally been erased from the Ultra phones and now it's just a flat edge display, which is good because they didn't also remove the edge panel, which is super helpful. Let me show you how. So it's basically customizable side panels that give you quick information and quick access to other apps, uh, services and other all kinds of like contacts or whatever you want to access. It's really up to you. So this provides improved accessibility and efficiency for time and also space, I guess, on your phone. So yeah, the edge panel is the 10th and final feature that I used six months later on the S24 Ultra. And this was just a quick video kind of highlighting the 10 features that I still use six months later on the S24 Ultra and other Android phones. Now, if you want me to make a similar one for iPhone, let me know in the comments down below which uh, features you use and I'll make one for which features I use and which features I think you should use if you don't know. So if you enjoyed, definitely let me know by leaving a like on this video, subscribe to see more and share with your friends and family who want to know these features about their Android phone and let me know if you want to see an iOS counterpart with the new iPhone 16 that's coming out soon in the comments down below. Again, subscribe to see more and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye. If you got this far in the video, comment which phone or device you're watching on in the comments down below. Okay, bye.